Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Smart24 TV and also the Fat Talks on X Spaces, formerly known as Twitter. Fidelis Leadership Institute organizes these talks every Thursday and we like to call them Fat Talks. Today we have a very special guest on a very important topic, women in leadership making ethics a, a culture. Now she's a renowned leader, she's at the very top of uh, the leadership. Please welcome with me Masi, Miss Masi Kainobusho. She's the Registrar General and Official Receiver of the Uganda Registration Services Bureau since December 2020. She's an advocate of the courts of judicature with vast experience in intellectual property, business law, project management, oil and gas, leadership in general management. She holds masters in intellectual property from the University of Turin in Italy and uh, a master's in business administration from Macquarie University Business School, postgraduate in legal practice from LDC, and uh, a Bachelor of Laws from Macquarie University. She's also currently the sitting vice president of the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, General Assemblies, and the WIPO 17th Advisory Committee on Enforcement. She's very passionate about mentoring young people into leadership, among other things, but first, Please join with me as we welcome her and sing for her happy birthday. Her, oh. <laughs> her birthday was yesterday, so we like to do a very small ceremony. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marcy. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, very Brian. Welcome, You're an upcoming artist, and uh, we can uh, register your copyright. Oh, yes. So that uh, Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Thank you. <laughs> there are people joining us live on Twitter Spaces, so please keep tuning in. Later we'll do an opinion poll, so stay tuned as she will tell us one truth and two lies. So look forward to that. But most importantly, let's just dive into the topic. Women in leadership, making it, uh, making ethics as a culture. Now I know, uh, Marcy, I don't know if it's okay to call you Marcy. Oh, please, I love my name. It's a yes. beautiful name. I know that you've been a leader for a yeah. while, and I just wanted you to tell us briefly what it is that you love about leadership, or what is your general understanding of leadership? Oh, thank you, Bran. Uh, leadership is beautiful, but also challenging, and uh, it is uh, uh, that responsibility that you uh, carry with yourself alone and with others. Uh, uh, you cannot separate uh, what you do in the private space and in the public space in terms of playing a responsibility as a citizen, as a daughter, as a mother, as a wife, as a son, as a hubby, and so on. So that responsibility that comes uh, from right from a young person as, as a child, uh, what, is, what are you doing with yourself in terms of academics? What are you doing with yourself in terms of uh, cleaning up the mess around you? Uh, it's, it's leadership uh, for me. I, I define leadership as responsibility, how you take care of yourself and uh, how you take care of others. It doesn't have to be a position and you don't need a title to be a leader. Wow. Indeed, and I know that um, in today's world we have more and more people shying away from, from leadership, mm. but w what was your first glance at leadership, or w what do you remember as the most significant moment when you thought you had taken up a leadership role and what that could mean for you as a woman, but also for the other women out there? I thank you, Brian. I, I think for me, I was born a leader. I always tell my siblings that if uh, my mother was expecting twins at that time, I'd be the leader in the time <laughs> taking the position, kicking my twin sister or brother. You'd want to come like out that. fast. Yes, I'd want to come out fast mm. because uh, right from childhood, as far as I can remember, I have been a leader at home, in school, in community. There's no place that I can be without leadership looking for me, but also me offering myself naturally to lead. If a bottle fell down now, I would just move so fast to pick it. If I found anything on the road, some rubbish on the way, I would pick it, but somebody would pass it. So leadership for me uh, comes uh, uh, organically. It is a part of me. Uh, but also the time I realized 
that I was meant for leadership was in primary school because uh, I was uh, always uh, taking on these leadership uh, positions and also uh, identified to lead uh, the, 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 the school choir, to lead uh, uh, the class, to lead the marching. We used to do uh, the, um, mm, uh, whenever there were national events, there's a group of uh, uh, smart uh, children that would be selected in primary school to be and represent the school yes. at those national events and do the marching and enjoy. And so I, was, uh, I would lead that group as well. So for my realized uh, leadership at a very young age, and because uh, I, I was born a leader, but even when I grew, I learned that uh, leadership can be taught. Mm. There's no one who can say that I'm not a leader, I cannot lead. Leadership can be taught. Yes. You can learn how to lead because human beings learn uh, through reading, through engagement, through uh, assignments, through uh, practical engagement, through involvement, through uh, inclusiveness. And, and so, so you can't give an excuse that you're not a leader. We can have issues of strong and weak leaders, laid back types of leaders, uh, active leaders, uh, transformational leaders, transactional leaders. Those are details. but. Anyone can lead. The fact that you wake up every morning as a human being, as a young child, you put on your uniform. You know that today you're supposed to put on a pink uniform yes. and maybe khaki pants and go to school and take responsibility for yourself up to the end of school. I mean, that is leadership. So uh, it shouldn't be an excuse that people are born leaders. I, I know it has actually been said that uh, from as early as uh, 6 a.m. when you mm. wake up, mm. you need to start by laying your bed. Yes. That is mm. taking responsibility and then mm. the rest of the day you go on to take responsibility in any other places. Mm. Now, in, in, I know you've given us an example of, mm. of, your, of your primary school and the matching. Uh, later, after the school period, what was your first opportunity at leadership um, significantly that you remember and mm. how would you say that came about, or what, what led you to, to aspire for such a position? Uh, yes, of course, uh, like I mentioned, the primary school uh, leadership positions where they, the, my teachers would pick me up, would pick me out, or even Sunday school, they pick me out to read a, a, a biblical pro provision or, or a chapter or lead a song and so on. But uh, when I went to secondary school, uh, there was elective uh, politics, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the uh, w w we had to stand to be elected uh, leaders. And so I also offered myself as a minister uh, in in all level. I became minister. I was the chair of drama. I was the chair of scripture union. I was inter club. I found myself in like over ten clubs, but also I found myself uh, becoming a deputy head girl. Uh, and later becoming a head girl in Olive, actually, uh, which was uh, not uh, popular. Uh, and then a minister of environment, uh, a, a, a minister of health, then uh, the, uh, in, in terms of the Lord Government Center, I found, no, Macquarie University, I found myself as the vice uh, president of uh, the Uganda Law Society, sorry, the Macquarie Law Society. Yes. Then later I, I, at uh, the Law Government Center, I, I became a farm leader and, and a minister. I was actually the only woman uh, or female in, in eldest who had two positions a farm leader, I remember farm B, and then at the same time, I'm a minister of health. So it, it was, it just comes, it just comes. So, and I would just speak, I was good at speaking, and yes. that time there was no buying sweets like these days, <laughs> or making posters. I made my first posters at the university, at Macquarie University. So in our secondary school, there's no posters. You just stand, speak, and you impress the people without uh, having to, to, to give them any extras. And you get through, and, and I must tell you that every time I would be standing for any position, my school must be like, no, you cannot win. But I also wanted competition. Mm. Uh, so that's how I sailed through. I sailed through uh, the elective politics. Even at Macquarie University, I remember when I was campaigning for the vice president of uh, the Macquarie uh, Law Society, which was a very big post. And I had to move to every law class all of the four years, every day, uh, and evening class, and so on. I remember there's somebody, actually a lawyer, a senior lawyer that I see uh, daily, 
and sometimes I want to tell him, I remember I was in Lumumba Hall looking for votes uh, and, 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 I'm, and I'm a boxer from Makere University. Mm. So <laughs> I, I met this lawyer, he was ahead of me. I said, please, uh, will you vote for me? This guy face to face told me, you can never be a vice president. You can never be a leader. I will not vote you. But this is a guy that consults me every day, yeah, every day. Too. Sometimes I want to remind him, you know, and, and in life, by the things that you say that hurt people or make them look uh, incomplete or incompetent, mm -hmm. sometimes they don't, they, they, people don't forget, but you may forget. So uh, when you see young people trying to aspire for things, the best words you can say is words of encouragement, not giving them false hopes. You can say you can make it, or you can try this, or maybe speak better, or we can, or you know, but don't tell them that they'll never make it in life. So every time I see this way, I'm like, okay, I made it in life. <laughs> and you're here consulting me. <laughs> and I know that Makere, yes, it, yes. it has always been mm -hmm. stiff. Really yes, good. and yes, uh, there was a ballot box, and I won, uh, I mean, it was, I think, over 80%. Landslide uh, victory. Yes, yes, landslide victory, and, 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 and I sailed through. So, of course, the same as LDC. I have, I've sailed through, actually, I've never lost an election. An election. That's why I don't want to stand for any <laughs> political... Any political. <laughs> You fear that your opponent will lose by far. No, I also don't want her to lose. <laughs> anyway, uh, but that's it. I, I, it's, I encourage people to, to try it out. You don't have to wait to be in school. You can in your community. Mm. And now in my community, I've been a, a Rotary, a Rotarian since 2013. Yes. And since I, I joined Rotary, I've been. I was a director in all spaces of uh, uh, sectors of, of Rotary. Then I led at a high level as president. Then uh, as a pastor, as an assistant governor, I led on Rotary District Committees. The Rotary District is composed of very many clubs, over 100 clubs, Rotary clubs. So I've led in these uh, uh, spaces. So you can lead in your community, you can lead in your church, you can lead in, in your uh, uh, place of residence associations, you can lead in your family association, in a circle, or, uh, you know, there are many groupings yes. where you can lead as a vice, as a leader, a coordinator. So there are so many opportunities for leadership. True. And it gives that a space for learning, for growth, for connection, and there's a lot to learn in, in leadership than, than the laws. Oh, mm. fantastic. Mm. Uh, you know, when you, when you shared your, your Makere experience, mm. I, was, I was just thinking about uh, the majority of the women that have been told that they will never lead yeah. mm -hmm. or they will never mm. uh, aspire to be anything. Mm. And I, I wanted to know what... I know you plan to speak about it much, much mm. later mm. on as you give mm. general advice mm. to the women, but what would you say for the women that are aspiring to take up any leadership position and they have the whole world literally gunned and ganged up against mm. them? Well, Brian, it's actually even not about uh, being a woman. It, I, I think human beings are wired to, some human beings are wired to just look down on things. They'll see you and not like you just because of your color. Just. So not vote you. <laughs> or they see the language that you speak or the, the your religion or the, there's lots of uh, uh, biases, uh, biases around there uh, around the world but just coming back to the question of being a woman uh, we must not um, regret being what we are by nature by the act of God and we must never apologize for being who we are I'm a woman and, and, and I love it being a woman and I was born a woman so I cannot want to be anything else and so I cannot try to be even a man just because I want to please or appease people or I, 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 I try to be or act like a man just because I'm a CEO. No, however uh, far you go or however big you grow in terms of leadership as a woman, you remain a woman because we are naturally set up and wired for some different stuff. The way we think is different from the way men think. The way we see things, uh, especially women are so detailed, so detailed, I look at a dot which a man will just pass and will not see it. Mm. I, 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 because of my nature as a woman, and, and the fact that I, I, I'm a mother or a mother 
uh, biologically or mentor to be to young people you have that empathy as a woman and and as sometimes i'm looking at you or guiding you as as a person that serves with me on the same committee or in the same organization sometimes i may look at you as a child support this was my child. Yes. How do I react to this mistake that this person has committed? So that's why I don't write people off easily. I don't fire. I, I let you fire yourself mm -hmm. unless you have committed an offense against the Human Resource co uh, 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 Policies of conduct, yes. or Code of Conduct that are grave and require those, uh, uh, you know, e extreme uh, decisions to be made. But I. I believe in rehabilitation and hearing from you. How did you arrive at this? What did you do about this? So uh, being a woman, you are at an advantage that you are somehow 360 degrees, you know, you have mothered, you have nurtured, you are a daughter and you know the responsibilities that you have played. You are a aunt, you know the responsibilities that you have played. You are a wife, you know the home, how life is, whether you go to the kitchen or not, you don't have to be defined to be going to the kitchen anyway. <laughs> uh, whether you wash uh, clothes or not, yes. it doesn't matter. And, and I, I, these days, I actually, when I'm mentoring young people, especially the young marriage, I say, you do not expect somebody's daughter to come and start washing with their hands yes. or peeling or going into smoke. I mean, we have devices. <laughs> we have innovations around. You washing put water, they, they use a machine, use I, uh, you know, dishwashers, dish, dish if I have the convenience, because the utilitarian uh, uh, theories are that we must maximize, that people maximize things that give them happiness mm. and try to minimize the things that bring them pain. So for me, if you give me, I always give an example, Brian, if they gave you five billion now, mm. but they better receive it. I receive and remember, <laughs> What would you do? What would you do with that, with it? Yes. What would you do with it? We'll do it, and they gave me the same money. We'll use it differently. I know, of Brian, course. you may tr want to buy a V8, uh, okay. uh, or go to 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 um uh, to, to 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 Monte the Carlo for, for Formula One. For the Formula One. For me, I would want. I might want to spend it on something. On a that, project. Yes, on a project. Mm -hmm. So as you're looking at Brian spending money on V8. Me, I have used the same money for something else that we may not see. So I don't want to judge Brian because he's driving the best car. We have different, we have different preferences. So going back to a question, being a woman is special. And also we must not play a victim card just because you're a woman. Mm. No, we must not. But also as you're leading as a woman, just know that there are seasons when we are in our moods. There are seasons when we are annoyed. There are seasons when we have a lot around us. You have family, you have children, you have hobby, you have what, you have aunties, you have, then you have work, you have, you know, it, 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 it all surrounds you. So sometimes you have to understand us as women. So when you judge me, just because of my leadership, I, I have interacted with women where who say that when you're leading and some man says this one must be me, me, me menstruating now, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. This one that, must that's... have not uh, had some emotional... Uh, engagement, you know, some 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 insistive things that are, are associated with gender stereotyping, but we must get out of that space. Whether we like it or not, we must not stand to be um, intimidated, but also we must uh, uh, not play a victim card. So there's need to balance. I shouldn't be intimidated. I shouldn't play or give an excuse just because I'm a woman, an excuse for not doing anything just because I'm a woman. No. We all are enabled differently or able, we have different abilities, so we have to use them uh, differently. So whether as a woman or a child or a, a man or a senior citizen, let's see how to uh, negotiate around the skills that we have, the experience and the learning abilities uh, that we have and the opportunities. So just because I'm a woman, I know I can lead, I have the capabilities, and I think I can lead better without uh, intimidating anyone True. as a woman, <laughs> because we know all the corners. And you'll care yes. for the highest and the lowest. Yes, for sure. And, and yeah. I wanted to pick up the discussion there and just take us back to, to, to the organizational setting, because we, our topic today is women in leadership, mm -hmm. and we've been speaking about leadership generally, and Masi here has given us a very wonderful explanation of what leadership looks like being responsibility from us as small as uh, 
your own personal room, your home, to the community, to wherever you are. And she has been exemplary in Rotary at the community level, at the national level. And even now she's a leader of a very big institution, Uganda Registration Services Bureau. So I wanted you to talk about organizational culture, mm. how, how companies are organized, the culture and the place of, of leadership, especially for the woman. Uh, because that, that's our topic here, not that they are victims, as you've said, yeah, and yeah, I really yeah. like that you've pointed mm. that out. Women should never play the victim card, yeah. mm -hmm. but should aspire mm. to take up those leadership mm. positions. So what would you explain as the organizational culture, maybe at the Uganda Registration Services Bureau, or wherever it is that you have been a part of, mm -hmm. and the women taking up some of the leadership positions, because we see that coming mm -hmm. all across the country, CEOs, heads of banks, mm -hmm. Uh, heads of institutions, mm. more and more women, but what's your say on that? Yes, uh, indeed we see more and more women in uh, different leadership spaces or responsibility uh, centers, uh, right from uh, the um, family level to the uh, community level to the national level, uh, regional level and international levels. And maybe this is also attributed to the demographics when you look at uh, the uh, metadata concerning the population uh, clusters and uh, the uh, numbers of women in the different communities and families and uh, our societies and generally the, the, the population, uh, our population as a country, Uganda. But also it speaks to the fact that uh, there was an investment at some stage in, in life uh, in terms of uh, national uh, goals and family goals mm. that uh, the girl child was invested in more to go to school and uh, uh, get opportunities to, to, to uh, enter all these spaces. Uh, look at uh, the political uh, uh, sector, look at uh, the, the, the uh, IT, uh, the technological, we see so many women, and politically we see many women in parliament. And ministers. Uh, and ministers, mm -hmm. and uh, if you see the vice president, the prime minister, mm -hmm. yes. the, the, the speaker of parliament and all ministers, mm -hmm. the CEOs of uh, uh, government and private entities. Um, economically also see women uh, uh, that are doing business uh, being registering businesses, yes. uh, we, you know that uh, women have uh, Ugandan women have been uh, uh, rated as uh, the most entrepreneurial uh, women in, in the world uh, at some stage, and many businesses are being run by women. Or if they're not running, or, or if, even when they don't own them, you see their managers, their directors, their ushers. They're doing the women are more. Go to the market. Do you go to the market, Brian? When did you last go to the market, like <laughs> Oina Market, Nakao Market, and all those markets? Uh, buying tomatoes. Yes, buying tomatoes. Do. Yes. Uh, How many men do you find? Really in the very, markets, very yes, fierce. women are, 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 are dominated and are, are dominating the markets. Uh, uh, we can go to the different scenes of uh, even religion. Look at uh, religion. I remember when we were growing up in, in in church, it was rare to see a reverend who was female. It was very rare, but now we have we have people who support. The, the religious leaders, the women we see, uh, uh, you know, pastors who are women, apostles who are women, so many of them. So coming to my organization, the one I work with, I don't own an organization, I mean the one I work with, yes. the Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Yours. Yes. Um, <coughs> women are now at 57% in terms of the labor force. Nice. So uh, you can see where the direction is, so we are more women. When you look at our board, our board is 70% women. I think we are the leading uh, board that, uh, I mean the board with more women Damn. on board and they're doing great. So decision making, even when you're in these boardrooms and, 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 and different boardrooms, uh, the uh, uh, board, uh, uh, the boards, you see many women in these boards. Look at the judiciary, we have so many prosecutors, we have so many magistrates, we have so many judges. So it, it is a shift, it is a wave that women are here and the earlier you embrace it, that we have to work with women leadership, female leadership, the better. Because sometimes the stereotyping and the uh, grooming of men, some men, has been shaped in a way that 
They don't feel that they should be led by women. <laughs> they feel that women should be in the back seat. They feel women should be in the kitchen. That when a woman comes in the boardroom, however smart she is, the man, one man may say, pour for me a cup of coffee. Because that's how they have associated the us, you know, be. to be. Come on, that is, and we need to groom our children, our young boys, to understand that you're getting into this marriage. Yes, you're the head of the family, and we respect the word of God. We honor you. We love you. We honor you. We care. So show us the support through the love. Mm. Show us the support, and we'll do everything by the way. So it's not about who has more money. It's not about who has more education. It's about mutual respect and knowing the boundaries that you have to cross or merge. So basically, as a woman, as women, we are still even irrespective of the education level, some men who have been wired in a different way uh, still see us as uh, just women. Just women. Just, just women. I, they don't I think that our decisions should be, you know, final. They feel that they should be subjected to committees after committee. They don't feel that a woman <laughs> should be giving support, for example, to a charity. They will feel that, where is this woman getting the money? Mm. But the woman is running a business. The woman is working. So please embrace it. The earlier you embrace it, the earlier people embrace that women can lead, women can thrive, women can be better. And women yes. can, when you engage as well, by the way, we can make the best, best partners. And I want, I want you to yes. hold that thought, because you mentioned a very, very important statement, that there is a wave of women leadership. Mm. And, and from what you're suggesting is that the earlier we, we engage more women in leadership, the better. Mm -hmm. And we'll be taking a very short five minute break, but as we get into the break, I want you to, to, to tell us uh, one truth and one statement that could be a truth or it could be a lie. And then we have an opinion poll where the members on, on X persons will tell us which one is it. So about me, about, about yourself, what I've done. Yes. It could be a but, statement that okay. we shall guess. Then I always do things different. I, I think uh, I don't want to change your rules, please, but please. I would prefer to have two truths and one lie because I, like. I want us to promote more truths than lies. That is, so you when you say oh, yes, yes. <laughs> when you say two two lies and one, it means that we are promoting more, more lies. lies than one. No, no, two so truths truth, and one lie. Yes, the first truth is that I love people. I love people, whether they hate me. Oh. Uh, I will love you, you will hurt me, I will mm. love you and I'll forgive you and move on. And I tell people, never combine, uh, never say that I have an enemy and you, you, you say you are coming to fight for me. Eh? I'll leave you in that. I'll leave you in that. I'll, in that. I'll, leave you in that. I'll forgive the person and I move on. That's me. Yes. Even my family knows. Masi has no enemies. Even when somebody hurts, you don't, you, you will find yourself alone hating that person. that person. So that's the truth about me. I love people, I forgive. And move on. The second okay. truth. Well, before you say the second, remember we're supposed to guess which one is the truth, which one is the lie. So the next two statements, let us guess which one is true, which one is the lie. Hence the poll. So you just say it as a statement. Oh, okay, okay. Then the then the next uh, then the next truth is uh, is uh, leadership is hard. Okay. Leadership is hard. And whether then, you're leading in a Range Rover, whether you're leading in a Vitz, whether you're leading in a Marshall, leadership is hard. And then the final statement? The final say a lie. Um, I, I, I told people in a group who are trying to feel good about me, how they have cut weight and they were saying 67, uh, 50 watt. And I told them I had cut to about 92, yet I was still at, stuck at 100 kilograms. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I have, uh, haven't I cut? I agree. <laughs> I think. <laughs> it's another lie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll yes, take a yes, small yes. five minutes and then we'll be back. Please stay with us on Expresses and on our Smart Twenty. <laughs> Driving business. Let's live it up and party.
party and have cracking good fun. When it comes to entertainment, here's TV's number one. Is everybody ready to go, go, go? We've got the zaniest characters to transport you away. The party is cracking, so why not come play? You're gonna love it. We've got so many channels and a ton of new shows, like Disney and Nickelodeon, where anything goes. <laughs> so live it up with ESTV. We bring the fun. You know we're number one. Luxury redefined at Seasan Hotel as you indulge in the splendor of elegant living fit for the royalty that you are. Step into comfort, pampering and blissful customer-centric service as you select from our range of comfy exquisite living quarters furnished to meet with your royal preference. Surrounded by scenic beauty, our tropical setting allows you to escape the clamorous odor of city life. Our ambient green gardens will guide you to a place of revitalizing rest. The three-star restaurant caters to your palate, serving your choice menu ranging from exotic cuisines to local delicacies. Our chefs will serve you full course meals for a truly out-of-this-world culinary experience. Our fully stocked bar to whet your throat. From renowned global brand whisks, brandies, jeans, beers and wines to our locally celebrated beverages, you will not lack for any brewage. It's an all new experience in the East at Seasun Hotel. So visit today at Plot 15 to 19 Spire Road Ginger or contact us on plus 256-751-719-960. And plus 256 785 354 614 for reservations. Seas and Hotels, Luxury Redefined. Rachel! Rachel Rich! <laughs> the Queen Cobra, the password of the money, the original no spare parts. The 11th commandment, the question and the answer. Oh, sis. I know you want money, but I'm also broke. Oh, no. Money is not an object. These days, Momo sorts me out anytime. In fact, my sister, let me also sort you out. Really? I've just sent you instructions on how to get a loan on Momo. I'm here for you. Can I borrow some chips? When you need a loan, you've got MTN Momo. We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. Smart 24. Driving business. Welcome back, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, from the short break. We are live on Smart Twenty Four TV and also live on Twitter Spaces X Spaces at Fat Talks organized by the Fidelis Leadership Institute. Now I noticed earlier that I hadn't introduced myself. My name is Brian Kambago Karogo, and I'm an associate partner at Acadia Advocates and I'm hosting the legendary, none other than the one and only, Madame Masi Keinowisho, who is the Registry General at Uganda Registration Services Bureau. Today we're talking about women in leadership, making ethics a culture, and earlier she shared with us leadership and what she knows it to be. She shared hints about her organization, Uganda Registration Services Bureau, and what the culture is there. And we had just taken a break as she was hinting on, on three statements. Now she has asked to redo them, and we'll give her a chance of just giving her three statements, and then you, the audience, will decide which one is, <laughs> which two are true, and then which one uh, is possibly a lie. Over to you, Marcy. Brian, you're a bad teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon but me. it's okay. <laughs> oh, that's not part of the statement. <laughs> that's that's statement, definitely false. <laughs> okay, the three statements are, I love people, I honor people, I honor humanity. That's one statement. The second statement is leadership is hard. They will not tell you 
but leadership is hard, but anyway, nothing comes easy. Uh, thirdly is uh, I've lost weight. I'm, 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 I'm 75 kgs. <laughs> <laughs> So over to you, our, our viewers and our listeners, which of those is true and which of those is possibly false. So, so Mazi, I wanted us to dig in back into a very interesting topic of leadership, and I know you speak passionately about leadership, mm -hmm. having been a leader from when you were a very little girl mm -hmm. to death and possibly to, 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 to the end of time. Yeah. You spoke about there being a new wave of women in leadership in organizations across across Uganda, across the world as we know it. And what would you say is the place of organizational culture or companies reorganizing to allow room for for women to be at the center of leadership? And maybe while you're doing that, if you could speak on, on the ethics um, in the organization. Okay, um, thank you, Brian. Um, uh, giving uh, women uh, uh, leadership opportunities. Uh, basically, the general rule is that uh, everybody should be given an opportunity to lead, whether young, whether old, whether mature, whether senior. That's why you you have community leaders, you have LCs, you have all kinds, whether educated, whether uneducated. So people should have opportunities to lead, and people should never f f fear to lead. Because there's nothing that comes easy. Leadership comes with so many challenges that they will never tell you, by the way. So sometimes we enter into leadership spaces without knowing what we are going to meet. So you don't know that you're getting into the deep end. You thought you were getting into the shallow end of the pool. And before you know it, you're in the deep end and you don't know how to dive out. You don't have a, 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 a floater. A, a, you don't have a body. A, a, a what? A, 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 a swimsuit. You, don't. So, you probably don't even know how to swim. Yes, even probably don't know how to <laughs> swim. So you find yourself in the deep end of leadership. What do you do? So you drown. You either, you meet. either drown if you don't have the skills to survive. So I think as we, that's why we're intentional on leadership that uh, as we get people into leadership positions, let's prepare them. Don't just ambush them. Let's prepare them for what they will meet so that they prepare accordingly. Unless you just, if you're joining politics, you know what will happen. So in uh, uh, BRSB, we have put in place um, <coughs> measures that uh, through appraisal systems of uh, 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 every time we appraise uh, our staff yes. and we have engagements on where they are doing uh, uh, bad and where they can improve, where they are doing excellently well how, and how where, and where we find that they are doing excellently well, we ask them to help support others. We even make them reference uh, points for our staff. If you know that the staff that, who doesn't know how to write well, you connect them to the person that is writes well or speaking and so on. So we, that's part of uh, preparation and mentorship. We also have uh, routine engagements on a one-on-one. -on -one. You give people assignments to take leadership decisions on their own at a department level. Uh, you create committees for different activities and you put different faces mm -hmm. to lead and they learn through committees. You uh, have uh, intentional mentorship sessions why we attach uh, young people, uh, the, especially the, the young, the upcoming leaders, to the senior leaders, to learn from them also. So the reverse is true because I believe in the reverse mentorship. Yes. You're a young brand, there's a lot I can learn from you. I am senior, I don't say I'm too old. I'm senior, senior. There's, there's a lot you can learn from me. So uh, uh, that kind of arrangement, we have some mentorship programs uh, that uh, we have put in place. But we also bring in external people uh, to speak to us. We have uh, fire spaces where we speak, we share, we bring people with different skills to talk mm -hmm. about life experiences and the thematic um, areas are always based on the season, what is happening around, what is the space, what is trending. Uh, we give opportunities for people to train, to learn. We support them to undertake courses that are going to help them in terms of self-development. Uh, and so, uh, as URSB, we have really been intentional on growing um, uh, uh, people, uh, personal development, 
because uh, it helps uh, this, the people uh, beyond the technical skills that you have. You have to have people skills, you have to have organizational skills, you have to have communication skills. You have to uh, have skills of staying in an environment and sharing, sharing skills where you, you have to share a workstation with somebody yes. or a car. <laughs> You're going on a trip to s with somebody, whether in, in the country or out. You have to know how to share, how to live with people. Uh, if you've brought, been brought in a community where you are a, a, a lonely child, you don't want to stay with or share with people, then it should be difficult. So we try to groom uh, uh, and, and, and engage, but also provide internship spaces for the graduate and, and those that are still in school and attachments uh, for people to learn. Then on the space of uh, women, uh, because as we grow these people, as we train, I mean, there we have women uh, as part of the the system. We uh, we don't we don't pick one person and say this position should be for a woman or this position should be for a man. We take people on merit. Uh, but you, as a woman, if you want to grow, you also have to invest in yourself as well, like any other man. So we have women, females in leadership positions at all levels, as directors, as board secretaries, as uh, legal uh, heads, as uh, uh, managers at all spaces. So we have so many uh, ladies that are, are thriving <coughs> in URSB uh, through our uh, our internal uh, control, man internal management systems, and they're doing well, and they're also doing great outside, because we have also encouraged our women, uh, our female leaders, that, um, uh, I mean, female at all levels, whether you are at, at uh, the lowest level, entry you, you're, yes, at the entry point, that uh, you also take out positions in the community. If you have to be on a board, as long as it does not conflict with your work, uh, just be on a board. If you're on a board of a company that is registered with, you have registered, there there could be conflict of interest. So as long as there's no conflict of interest, you can be in, you can thrive in other spaces that you do your business, thrive with it as you work with your RSB, as long as you know how to balance your, your time. So we are doing well in terms of... Uh, and I've heard leadership. you mention the intentionality of your RSB in having a culture that that not only grows the leader, but first assesses their skill set, mm -hmm. who can actually lead people, who is interested in doing, taking a leadership position, and then you pick on that mm -hmm. and give them opportunities, launch them into mm -hmm. the deep. Yes, of course, as we lead, uh, we, we see the capabilities of different people. And we also recognize the fact that uh, people are able differently uh, the people are good at communication, the people are good at mobilizing, the people are good at, uh, um, at uh, stakeholder management, the people are good at just laying back and giving orders and so on. So we, sometimes we have positions, especially for committee, uh, ad hoc committees and for events, because your position is your position by virtue of your contract. Yes. But we also have the, 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 the liberty and the freedom to transfer you to a department where we feel you can learn something or offer something. And or be tested, uh, or be tested as well, especially in that area. <coughs> so um, uh, uh, that is the approach that we, we, we take. So uh, for, for we give those opportunities that uh, now, by now, we know who is good at what. But also we keep, because people grow in, every day in, in the different um, uh, skills, uh, we test them and say, this one has never been achieved, I'll come to let the person do it. And they will pull, pull it off and be like, oh my God, we didn't know this was good. So we test uh, people as well through the assignments that we give them and in terms of representation, in terms of uh, implementation. You had asked about ethics, how we have been intentional. We yes. have, of course, uh, as, a, as, as a government entity, we have uh, codes of conduct. We have uh, the human resource uh, yes. manuals. We have all these uh, documents that... And uh, I first wanted to ask, is, is there a place for ethics and leadership? Oh, yes, why and, not? And how, how pivotal is it in, in today's leadership structure, generally across the board? Yes, of course. Uh, I think leaders, if you're, if you're a leader whether in any other, in all levels, you have to lead with clean hands, with clean mind, with a, 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 a tabula rasa, without a bias, basically. Yes, uh, yes. and uh, because when you come with a dirty hands, dirty mind, with intention to steal, kill, and destroy, 
uh, he, people will not look up to you and before you know it you lose actually the space for leadership and for us because I believe that uh, in ethics is uh, is basically the practices that uh, 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 lead you to taking disciplined decisions in life uh, that are according to your values and these are usually uh, influenced by your background, how you were brought up by the way, how you are shaped, what you saw, or your religious beliefs because uh, religion also has a lot and culture and the environment that we keep the people, the company that we keep, the environment that we stay in. Uh, if you keep a company that is uh, full of people who are always stealing, backbiting people, uh, insulting people, that is what you'll be. Uh, definitely, that's what you'll be. And you'll feel to always want to fit in that company and you'll be pushed to steal, maybe. Uh, if you are in a company which is uh, uh, respects its values and, and, and morality and and the discipline and the good and the bad uh, distinguishes between the good and the bad. You you will see it. You keep uh, enriching and empowering yourself in that uh, uh, in that uh, uh, you know uh, line. And so and with ethics, you either you either have it or you don't have it. You can't say that <laughs> now I have ethics. I, I always have my ethics at six p.m. That's when I have my ethics. That's when I or, switch on. Yes. Or uh, 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 during the fasting season, that's when I will not touch this. Uh, and you know people like that. The Lent season. Yes, the, the Lent season, season, the Ramadan, and all those. I, I mean, it should be a lifestyle. It should be part of your body system, your mental system, your physical system. That whether it is in the night, whether it is in the day, whether it is in the dark, whether it is um, in Uganda or outside, whatever you cannot do. You can't do. For example, I mean, you can say that, oh, I'm in Uganda, I, I, I can't misbehave because everybody's looking at me. Mm. And then you say you're out now of the country, so you misbehave because nobody's looking at you. That's not ethical at all, no. at all, at all. So you get it. So it's part of it's part of your get up, your, your, your lifestyle, it's part of your body system that whether I'm in Kampala or in Gulu or in uh, uh, Ecuador, or in Dubai, whatever my values are, they should be kept that way. And that's how some of us have lived our lives. Mm -hmm. yes. And earlier, mm -hmm. I know earlier I attempted to ask you if mm -hmm. there are any women leaders that mm -hmm. you know that have, have stood the ethical test or that you could give as examples of having upheld ethics in their leadership styles. You see, ethical uh, ethics is, is a personal issue. Mm -hmm. And it is deep ingrained within what your heart but also your practices. So I, 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 we have so many wonderful female leaders and male leaders. So many of them just that people just pick on something small and want to feel that everybody's doing that. No. So many and actually even the perceptions around the people that we feel that are not ethical. Mm -hmm. You see somebody and because the media is doing this, saying this about them uh, that they are not ethical. We, I'm not going to judge because I don't know what to do in the light and in the dark. In the and private. as such I will not mention names because I, I don't want to be selective or segregative because I believe that generally everybody is ethical, all leaders, because that's why they earn that space to be in that leadership. If they had ethical issues uh, externally and they were visible, maybe people wouldn't have put them in those positions. True. Yes. So for now, I'll take it as a general rule because this is personal. I can't say so and so is a leader that has ethics, so and so is a leader that has no. No, I'm not going to judge. I'm not because the ethical test, integrity test. It's a different test because yeah. what I think is unethical may not be what not yes apply. yes may not apply to, <coughs> to the other or what I perceive may not. If uh, you find me eating my breakfast every day in Serena every day, you think that I am stealing money. You because you have, can't afford it and you have no access to that. You don't even know where I earn my money, mm -hmm. and you start making it. Oh, this person has a and actually this is what the public has put in that space of you know they feel that. Even everyone who works with government is a thief. No, we are not. And I must say, we are not. Mm -hmm. We work so hard. We, we had lives before we worked in government. And we'll have lives even after government. So we should not be victimized. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm in a government car, 
just because I've gotten out to go to a supermarket to buy groceries for home, mm -hmm. you shouldn't start judging me and pointing fingers. Babe, those are the ones. No, 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 no. And we're not going to stand this by the way. Mm -hmm. Because we work so hard, there are so many costs that we, we face. There are so many pains we face in terms of leadership. But also our leadership positions come with benefits. So why do you want me to take the pains of leadership and not enjoy the, the benefits the of the leadership? Mm -hmm. Because also you, you're enjoying the benefits of life. So we should stop that conversation out there, that government officials are swimming in our money, what, what, no. So kindly, whoever is listening, mm -hmm. let's learn to respect our spaces and draw boundaries that because you are not in that position, because these positions are for everybody. Today I'm here. Tomorrow somebody, you'll brand. You'll be the registrar general tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We are not here for, for forever, no. Because we also replace others. True. So do not see me in this position and start victimizing me, start making all kinds of comments. You don't know how I am. you don't know even the loans that are, 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 are on, my, on my head. You know the, don't know the, the people that are surrounding us, uh, the people that we support in our system. As long as whatever I'm doing is right with my God, mm. is right with my God, and I have that piece of service, so you have no right to judge me because you don't know me. The public is judging us. They don't know us. They don't know that we have values. You do. Values that we have sustained. So, uh, the, and, and I'm saying this to emphasize ethical, ethical codes. We have personal ethical codes. Mm -hmm. It starts with your personal ethical codes. Before even you go to the institution or that, the institution that you work with or the law firm that you work with or whatever uh, supermarket you work with, I was discussing with somebody who was telling me that some, some supermarkets failed. Okay, it was off record. Because the tellers, or not the tellers, the people that worked in those supermarkets would change codes mm. and put their prices and deal with customers and they are paid the, the difference. And you imagine you have such a work on your team. <laughs> so we have human beings in our, on our teams that will do those things because they want self-enrichment, they want to uh, get rich quick. We have them. But the, do we have a system of catching them? That is where the game is. That you cannot at your RSB say that you can register anything without payment because the system will not even accept you yes. to, to go beyond application. I, they can't. And I wanted to speak about the system yes. because there's been an, an entire overhaul at yes. the, the URSP with the new online registration. Mm. Everything is now systematic, mm. streamlined. Mm. The brokers that mm. used to be uh, totally being cut off. Mm. It's the digital era. Mm. Would, would it be an argument of yours that, that more and more digitization has helped uh, uphold some institutional values like ethics? Yes, uh, uh, yes. Uh, of course, the uh, online system, thank you, Brian, for that good question. The online systems help us a lot to monitor uh, the application payment system because all are done uh, on, the on the system and you, there's evidence. Uh, beyond even the online systems, we have um, the structures in, in space where you have like the audit function yes. that audits everything, all the processes. We have the compliance and enforcement mm. function that has to scan whether we have complied with all the processes. We have the legal function in URSB, which looks at the legalities of every step Mm -hmm. Every step, whether on recruitment, whether on procurement, whether you're signing a contract, we have a legal eye, a deep legal eye that zooms in to help us. And this is not, these structures uh, are not to, uh, to catch, they're, it, they are just checks, doing the checks and balances. Because we're human beings, you can make an error. Mm -hmm. There are clients that used to bring fake receipts yes, with yes, wrong yes. PRNs. Mm -hmm. so, there's a time when we didn't have a system and those receipts maybe will go through because we didn't have a, a system to check them. But now you put in a PRA, it will tell you that, no, this receipt has been used for this and this and this. And it so, cannot be used yes. again. So we have the financing that checks the payment. So we have all the checks. So whether a person has is lacking in terms of integrity, the system will catch you. Mm. And even the system will not allow, allow you. Uh, even if you try to circumvent the system, all these, the legal, the compliance, the, 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 the enforcement, the internal audit, uh, the, we have the uh, quality assurance, yes. all these systems are put in place to help us do quality work and the best within the law. That somebody must pay, somebody must put the right document, 
it must be at the right time and must be processed within the right space. So even if you are not, you had integrity issues, how, somehow the system will force you to be that. Yeah. I know. Wow. I know you speak very passionately mm. about it. It's yeah. clearly evident yes. that you've done, mm. you've done your best to ensure that the systems mm. uphold mm. what you believe mm. and they stand for what you believe and the mm. people that you And we have to actually an, ethic, an, ethics, uh, an ethics committee. Yes. Yes, we have an ethics committee in place as well. At, at URSB. At URSB, a committee that is there to promote ethics. We have ethics champions, ethics and integrity committee. We have all, you, you can imagine all those innovations. By the way, URSB is such an amazing institution. Yes. Not that because I work there, mm -hmm. but I, I, I look at this the institution, I'm like, my God, I wish people knew how these people work so well. And this, so they, hard. It's so hard to make things better every day. When clients are complaining, <coughs> excuse me, when clients are complaining about some delays and the system are delays, those things are there, the external factors that make us delay the system. But also the clients, sometimes clients are not patient and others want a name, like Brian, you want Brian Enterprises. And we say it's not available. And you go on Twitter <laughs> and you start insulting them. So when, when clients are doing all this, we tell them that clients, nobody from URSB, no staff, and I must, I will vouch for this, no staff leaves their home. To fail you? To come and fail a brand somewhere. Never. <laughs> Never. Because your payment actually, you, your service is not, their payment is not based on, based on, on your service. work, on your mm -hmm. service. Not at all. So nobody from your RSB leaves their place of residence to go to office. Or even because we work virtually as well, we have flex work because everything is oh. Gets on their workstation to frustrate anyone. Never. And I want clients to trust us. Mm. Never. 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 Not in URSB. So we know we are here to serve. We are here to enable the processes. We are, enabled, we, we are here to enable transactions. Because, Brian, we know that you, the resolution you have brought to open a bank account, mm. you want to put, to, 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 to bank about $1 billion or the power of attorney. Or you, the bid that you have put, you need to, 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 it has to bring some livelihood in, not only to your clan, but also that money feeds the family and entire society. You get it? So we, we know that that power of attorney can change, has, the, 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 has legal implications, it can change ownership anytime. Mm -hmm. You come from one uh, ownership to another, a building, land. So that's why sometimes you are careful when we are especially registered in powers of attorney that have land transfers, that have property transfers, basically. Mm. We have to say, Brian, please identify yourself. Do what? So when you got the extra money clients that say, you're delaying us, but supposing it was, it were you. Mm. Somebody, before you know it, somebody will transfer your land. And somebody will own your building if you were to take it. So we have to pay extra care in so, some of these transactions. If it's a resolution got an account, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you get it. But a, a resolution to withdraw eh? one trillion from your bank or to, to transfer how much money? No, we have to first verify That's the signatures right. and the identities. That's why we have the beneficial ownership register that was recently opened. That's why we have a data uh, update exercise that is ongoing mm -hmm. because before, we're looking at companies before the online business registration system. We have digitized, we have automated, we are digitalizing everything. So we're saying, Brian, Brian was in 2005, of course, he was here, but registered a company without an identity. But there are so many brands with those names. Mm. So how can we know that it is Brian? It's still the same brand. Brian, ID number. What? So the ID number will save you the what? You remember in law school, would say we'll be drafting, I think even up to now, uh, Brian, what? Son of. So that's part of identity because there can never be a, another brand, son of what, unless it is your sibling called brand or what. So you have to take it an extra mile to identify it a person by their birth, by their address, by their clan, by their tribe. So the identity goes that deep. So we want our clans to cooperate with us. So it goes back to the ethics, the integrity of our data, the ethical issues within the registration component that we are trying to comply come clean because the time you registered there were no online registration systems you told lies we have clients who registered by names that were not existent they registered even some of them registered names of children they did not have because it was as easy to get on the register just write mukasabana write 
Timothy, what, right? And then you, you know, what we were looking at those years, mm. what they were looking at was just getting on the register. But now you get on the register, the system is saying, who are you? Present who is this person? Idea. So uh, we want ethical issues in your companies, in your, in your innovations. We also want an, a, a register database that has integrity that you can rely on, that is authentic. So what I hear you saying is that because of the ethical transformation in the online register system, businesses have been forced to be ethically compliant. Yes. yes and right. there's uh, an entire shift in the business landscape for Very people true. to be more mm. honest, mm. more um, mm. uh, open, mm. comprehensive, giving us documentation. Mm. I wanted to, I, I know time is really, really running and we'll be closing in a, in a short while. But I want to take us back to the leadership and, and the place of women mm. ascending into these mm. roles mm. of leadership. Mm. And if you think uh, from your experiences, are there any ethical practices that have hindered women taking up uh, leadership positions? And maybe if you could conclude it with, uh, with what advice you'd give to women that are looking to take up leadership spaces, that are looking to have any ethical impact in their spaces, be it the community, be mm. it an organization, be it... Uh, a place they are hoping to be hired. Mm. Yes, uh, I always tell uh, my, my, my people that my, in my space is that uh, reputation is, um, is key and it holds that value that uh, no money can buy, because you can't buy reputation. No, right? credibility. You credibility you can't. So you're either credible or you're, you're not. You're not. And so it is important that as we lead, as we grow, as we thrive, that we keep credible, we keep authentic, we keep the integrity and uh, ethical codes within our lives because what you did yesterday, so you'll be standing, you, actually this happens so often when you're going to stand for parliament, Brian. Yes. That's when people remember to say, oh, there, there's some, there are pictures she took when she was a teenager, or she, there's somebody, <laughs> there's this story that appeared in the paper. That's when people start hurting your reputation. Mm. So what you do today has an impact on you and your dears even when you're not here because you have generations after you. And so as, and that is general. And of course as women, since it is uh, women in leadership uh, focus uh, discussion, as women we need to, 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 to embrace issues of reputation and, and know that whatever we're doing today, whatever we did yesterday is going to impact on our next job. And I, I also always say that, uh, you know there are people who you put in a position, they know they applied for it, they're, they're supposed to be officers or registration officers, but they say, no, I'll give my best to this institution when I become a senior registrar or a manager. But Brian, do it now, because you may not get there. Yes. And, and God places you in that space, that position, so that will perform yourself and it puts you on to another position. But there are others who will not. They say that, uh, if you until I become... If you're interested with yes. how can exactly. you trust you Exactly, much? that is it. Mm. So at whatever stage, at whatever level, you need to give your best Give your best. Uh, keep time. Respect people's time. To give an extra eye, an extra ear uh, to whatever you're doing. This letter you have drafted, this report you have drafted, the client you're attending to, would you love it if it were you in the client's shoes and somebody was, would you love that? So you who is delaying the client's response, if the client has bothered to write, they write a letter asking for a presentation, asking for a status report. Why shouldn't you respond? At least acknowledge receipt, we are, we shall get back to you. But you get a letter and you sit with it. For two months, for one two year. Months. So, <laughs> so why did the client write? Mm. And that is your work meanwhile. Yes. Not anyone is work. It will take somebody, oh, to client to call, they see, oh, then they see who has to go, who sending this letter, then they oh, I gave it to this, I get it, I get it before night. Oh. I, we didn't have anything to offer, so we kept the letter. But really, somebody who wrote is waiting on the response. So it's about self-leadership. It's about respecting people's time, people's effort. Somebody has made effort to write a letter. For God's sake, this is a government office. Oh, uh, ink is paid for, paper is paid for, and you're also paid for. Your intellectual capital is paid for, that's why you're there. Type it, respond. Even an email, there's internet, paid for. 
So why shouldn't you respond? So simple things like those ones yes. speak to your integrity. Because it's about integrity. Do you observe what you're supposed to do? If you're supposed to be in office by eight, and that is a quote, why should you be the one to create excuses for a whole month? Unless you have a special case, mm. and the special cases are handled in their own unique way. So why is it that you will be the one to give excuses? We have to, to, to groom no excuse leaders. Yes. That when I call Brian, why didn't you submit this on deadline? Because I'm also under pressure, meanwhile, from my bosses. Oh, you see, you see, I was going, you see. You say, say, Brian, we no are excuses. supposed to be no excuse leader. If you're not available, I'm not saying that you do it. Assign, delegate. Mm. That's why we have so many colleagues. If you're unable to do it, you delegate. Really, if you bring a letter to your supervisor and the spell checks, the what, the content. We have even online tools that now help artificial intelligence mm. that help you to start off a good draft and also edit. But you are not utilizing them. Somebody has to still put here a comma, a full stop, this word is what, this word. So, I mean, you waste people's time and will not take you serious. So, I, I'm, and I'm using those small things. Uh, let's say a client calls, wants information. I say, no, I am not available. If you're not available, oh, somebody says I am on leave. So what? The client is not, doesn't want to care. It doesn't care whether you're on leave. Answer. They want, I need a process of fees for registering a trademark. Mm -hmm. So the best you can say, let me, uh, let me get you the information. Uh, I've taken your number. Let me, let me send an email or I'll get my colleague to call you. But you say, I'm on leave. I'm on leave. So have you sorted the client? And then you're still working with the organization. So those are small things. Oh, we don't work on public holiday. For us, we work on or in, or nationally. I mean, we, public service doesn't work on public holiday. But there are those public holidays where there are gatherings that we've been invited to speak to 100 people, 500 people, 1,000 people. And you, have so, to be there. and you have to be there. It's an opportunity. So I'm not saying because it's a public holiday, I can't be there. You don't. The, 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 you, you have to look at the benefit, cost and benefit analysis. These are 1,000 people. This is a, this is a market. It's an opportunity for me to market. So there are so many things as leaders that we continue to teach and engage with um, different people and stakeholders and stakeholder management and managing expectations of the people that we lead and the people that we don't lead directly. So you said, lastly, what should I say? I wanted you to think about <coughs> for, that, for that example. I, I agree with you entirely. Mm. It's, it's in the basics. If you cannot do the basics, yes. then you really cook for nothing. So leadership and ethics starts with the basics. I thought as you conclude, uh, you would speak about any key barriers that you know about that have, present, that have prevented women from ascending to leadership positions. And then maybe you could also conclude with um, general remarks on, on how to, to promote gender diversity and ethical leadership within organizations. Oh, thank you, Brian. I think um, there's that fear of the unknown, usually, that now if I get into this leadership, what will happen to my life or my maybe my lifestyle, my freedom. You know, leadership takes away freedom, yes. especially these positions that we occupy. I used to go freely to, you know, sit there with my market ladies, chat, eat katogo, but now you'll sit there and it will make news. You go to a shop, you want to negotiate with them, oh, the shoe, and when they see your face, they'll know, ah, you know, register general. They will triple it. But you want to say, but you, I, this shoe is, why? It's, it's, then you start again, and they're like, now, now. So, you know, these leadership positions come with a lot of course, but uh, we shouldn't fear. We shouldn't fear to take our leadership positions, that's the first. Let's offer ourselves for leadership. Because if you're not leading, what are you doing anyway? And by nature, I was telling some young person yesterday, and this is uh, not embarrass uh, women or, or the uh, female, females, uh, and that the first, actually, as I took it far to explain how women are special and lead naturally, because now from the age of, like, let's say, seven years, Usually eight years, girls start menstruating. Mm. 
So the girls are prepared, taken through. If you see this sporting, do this, do this, this is how you use the title, and so on. So I'm, I'm telling that every other time women are menstruating and don't feel shy about it. So, and we are in public. Have you ever seen women going with blood scattering around? No. So it is selfish. That is the responsibility that a woman knows that this is my season and I have to prepare and make sure that I'm clean, I am white, I'm proper, I'm covered, you know. That's the first point of leadership. Otherwise, you'd see women on the streets with all the red, you know, color around them. That's the first kind of first of responsibility. So tell me. Tell me. So we are natural leaders. The fact that we know when our cycle happens and when we're supposed to control ourselves, how we flow, how we protect ourselves, how we do what. So that is a natural system. Mm. So getting back to what women should, leadership is also not made, uh, there's no openness around uh, leadership that people will throw in the deep end and will not tell you what it is. But leadership is hard. And at whatever level, whether you're leading an LC1, whether you're leading Panama, whether you're leading your own family, family association, your own family business, your own OB's group, or just, leadership is hard at all levels. So you have to also come in with some skills of people engagement. If you come into leadership thinking you're going to manage robots to run AI, you will fail. That's why I said I love people. I, I make sure that in my leadership styles, I empower people. I show them how much they are loved. I show them how much value they, they, they bring, how much potential they have, how much we can't do without them, because we can't. Even this obvious, we are talking about these online systems, they have the digitization, the what, all this publicity, the reputation, the image, without people. Or is it made by robots? Even the robot needs somebody to switch it on. You get it. So we have to value people. So as you lead fellow women, value that person. Because that person you may be backing at, that person you may be undermining, is the person who may be your boss tomorrow. A person may be your boss tomorrow. A person who, who will recommend you, or a person I always uh, chat with my, my, my colleagues at work when I'm checking on their children and what virtually I say, well, those are future leaders, future in-laws, maybe my daughter may get married to your daughter or my son, you know, these thing, things happen. So let's not lead in a vacuum. Let's lead knowing that there are so many factors that that person is a wife somewhere, is a mother somewhere, is a husband somewhere. He may be a sweeper in your office, but he is a head of a family somewhere. So do not humiliate them. Do not humiliate them that man. And do not show they are, you know, do not expose them. So see how you can handle. So in, 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 in leading as women, let's respect people. Let's respect, let's empower them. Let's give them the tools. Let's wish them well. Let's not feel that when somebody is better than me in looks and speak and what, speech and what, they'll be, no, I appreciate beauty. There are so many beautiful girls in your recipe. I appreciate, I say, oh, you're beautiful. You've put, you, oh, I love that. Oh, that's true, why did you buy it? Hey, why did you buy it? Oh, I, I will give me the address. And I, I, somebody will be like, why are you putting on a shoe better? No, I'll ask where did you buy it. If you don't mind, I can get an address so that I also buy. So wish people well. Mm -hmm. Give them opportunities. Don't put the opportunities on yourself. How many trainings will you do? And when will you have, do you have even the time? Give them to others. Let other people travel, whether in, uh, locally or externally. Let other people, check. let them get a qualification that you don't have. You don't have to, uh, to have all these qualifications, even have opportunity. Wish people well. When you see them driving well, say yes. That's good. When you, you get their masters or PhDs, celebrate with them. Because you can't be everywhere. You can't be uh, 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 the one taking the leadership in every space. You can't have it all. When they speak well, learn from them. When they write well, write, uh, write, uh, write I mean, uh, learn from them. Uh, surround yourself, learn to surround yourself with people who are better than you because they also push you. And also don't keep in a space where you are the best. 
Yes. Oh, now the boys come. Oh, the, the Jared yes. Oh, DG, and you're full of praises. You will get stunted there. Go in places where you are challenged, where even you're not to be recognized, where even they will not give you a front seat, where they will feel, oh, oh no, yeah. Go in those spaces so that you also feel normal, especially when you're in high top positions. Because when you get used to just all the recognitions and what, the moment you leave that office, you fail to fit in society. You feel everybody's watching you. You feel everybody's judging you. I have lived and I continue to live a normal life. If I want to go to Chikubo now, I'll go there. Mm -hmm. I may put on a mask just for just, but I'll go there. If I want to go to Nakama market, I will go because I love markets. If I want to go to the movies, I go. Nothing is stopping me. I live a normal life. That when I leave this space as a woman, as a leader, I know that I can thrive in another space without feeling that I am being judged or I miss uh, whatever clout that comes with leadership. That's why I move in a simple, you welcome me. Yes. Yeah, I simple, simple. In a simple way, in my simple way, you know. Simple life. Let's, and I'm not saying that you deny yourself the beauty, the, the benefits and what, no. But learn, be a normal human being. Know that we are human beings. We have the same blood color. We have the same body systems. We have the same body biological setups. We have the same, same color or different color. The only difference is that we have got opportunities or platforms now that others have not got. And those people will get them. And all even better platforms. So let's learn to live with people and support them as leaders. So as women, let's always thank God that we are women, we are special. Let us be women, let us be mothers. Because as leaders, sometimes we forget that we are mothers. Mm -hmm. You are a leader, but you, you have no time even to collect your child or to assign somebody you trust from school. You have, you get home and you, 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 you really have changed. I said, be a woman, because we are set up to be a woman. And I'm not saying that to go, you know, you do whatever you feel that gives you, even if it's a flower set up, just do it, something that keeps you, because women are, are wired differently, are wired differently. So let's learn to play all these responsibilities, uh, draw our lines, draw the, the boundaries, uh, between the workspace, between the family life, and also as we lead, let's not forget our family members, our family relations. Call that auntie, call that granny if you still have them. Call that family person, your cousin, distant cousin, whether they like it or not, because you know people you always say that when people grow in leadership or being getting these spaces, they forget people. But it's not that they forget, we become too busy, too busy with work. So it's we don't we don't uh, balance or draw boundaries. So let's not forget family. Let's not forget our spiritual lives. Our spiritual lives are very important. Go to that spiritual space. I meet people who meet me at church and like, oh, you come to this church? You come to this? I'm like, why? Why should they tell you, you? Did you know me even before I became a registrar general? This, I mean, this is my space. Somebody feels that they know you because they found you at, at a certain church, praying, fasting, what, doing uh, praise and worship, what? I mean, I am normal, I am a human being, and actually it's, I, my, I'm, I'm in a safer space, being in a worship space, in a prayer space, in my spiritual space, than being out there, because the more I lead, the more I need that spiritual covering. There is a lot of wars that we fight. There's a lot of people fighting us in these positions. But do you fight back? You can't. Sometimes you have to say, or all the time, God take it on, because take the Bible is very clear. God, take it on. Because the Bible says, you said you'd fight for me, my battles. For me, let me kneel here, pay my tithe, do my seed, do what, praise you, and trust you to fight my battles. Otherwise, if you see everybody throwing here, here, you will lose the focus of leadership. So it's never easy. Just know that in this position, you are a silent person. Now here, Brian, you're in a law firm. If you become an MP, or uh, become, you, it creates, the, every level creates its kinds of enemies. Mm. Naturally, somebody will look at you and just dislike you. Just because you are in that position or because of your size. But are we going to fight back? No. But are we going to, to hate on? No. We love. That's why I say I love people. Whether you hate me or not, I will love you. It is up to you and I will greet you. There are people who will greet and they will not even respond. But have I greeted you? Yes. 
So who has the case to answer before God? It is you who has not responded. I play my part. So let's go in these positions of leadership. Let's lead well. Let's lead with God. Let's know that leadership is never easy, but we are also not easy because the person who places us in those positions of leadership is stronger than we that know. Thank you. you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. That is Masi Kino Bisho for you. Very passionate about leadership, passionate about her role as a mother, as a leader, as a woman, and as a person that believes in giving people many, many, many chances. And, and maybe, last, sorry, when, when people are, are guiding you, uh, the people that supervise you, when somebody is guiding you, this is wrong, do this this way, this this way, Yes, it's not the that they, yes, the mentorship, it's not that they don't like you, it's part of mentorship. They see the potential. Brian, and I say that, ah, oh, Brian, the paper you wrote is just zero score. I'm trying to say that, Brian, you can uh, get a hundred. So some people misunderstand correcting them because they didn't grow up being corrected, being guided. They think that you are bashing them. No, you are making them, polishing them for life. So in these spaces of leadership, you have to make sure that you don't stand below the standard. You must have a standard and let nobody, whether competent or not, a person that's, let nobody ever put you below your standard. You have a standard as a leader. So just because somebody comes late, that all oh, those people can't start their meeting late uh, at eight, when the meeting is seven, don't be an amount to that extent. You got seven. If they come late, it's up to them. So I felt that that should come out. Yes, yes. and that, that has also reminded me of the famous saying that, that you cannot be in authority unless you have been under authority. Yes. So it's good for any leader to be trusted with leadership. You must first serve. Mm -hmm. And it's a joy to hear uh, the Registrar General share with us how she loves to serve, how she loves to go to the very meek in the market, in the worship place, to meet the people in the, in the lifts and exchange mm -hmm. shoe numbers and shoe sizes mm -hmm. and shoe yeah. uh, stores and ETC. Thank you, thank you very much, Masi. I have enjoyed listening to you. I'm sure the fat talk, fat by the way is faithful, available and teachable. So here we aspire for people like you that uh, honored our invitation. You were available and you've taught us many, many a lesson and I'm sure we'll take uh, these lessons to the viewers on Smart24 TV and the listeners on X. Um, X, it's called now, it's now yeah, called yeah, X. X yeah. If there's one thing, Masi, that you'd like us to take away, just one statement and then we'll close. What would it be as relates to women in leadership, as relates to ethics, as a culture? I, I think if it's one thing, it's just uh, uh, trust uh, in the Lord because uh, we all need the grace of God to do, do everything in the spaces we are, uh, we are in, either in leadership and family, because you can't do it alone. You can't do it within your strength. We need God. It's God in the middle, and we need His grace. Amen. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your path. Thank you so much. We'll see you next Thursday. It's been a pleasure from us here at Smart Clinical TV. Thank you to all the team that came with uh, the Registrar General from URSP, from uh, Fat Talks, from Smart 24. It's been a pleasure serving you. Brian Kabai is my name. Good evening. Thank you.